Hi, Darren. <coughs> Hello, Darren, sweetheart. Um, cool. Yeah, no, I was sitting there saying, so I have to follow Darren. Sí, jole. But okay. Because, you know, we step up to the challenge. We love you, Darren. Thank you so much for, for hosting us here today. Um, and I... Um, at this point in my life, I think a lot of you are probably feeling the same way. We have to have a tremendous amount of gratitude for every day that we're here, right? And that we're alive and that we're able to breathe. So I'm like, seriously, yo, I'm down to that level. I'm like, I'm just happy. I'm alive. I'm breathing. I'm healthy. Oh my God, I'm going to the penthouse of the Ford Foundation to be with amazing people. And so we do that to pump ourselves up. And we thank you, Darren and Hillary and Elizabeth and all of your team for allowing us to do this. And also thank you for being a funder of Futuro Media Group. We love you for that too. <laughs> no, adore you for that, actually. <laughs> adore you. So, you know, the title of my speech, okay, I'm watching the time, how do we exist in the American imagination? And it's like, <clears throat> how do we ask that question in the year 2016? So earlier this week, you know, um, this is Hispanic Heritage, whatever, month, half month, weeks, couple of, and so right now in Washington, D.C., you know, it's, it's hysterical Hispanic month celebration. Um, <clears throat> we are a little bit hysterical right about now, but yeah, so, um, so being there in Washington, D.C., and being with both Joaquin and Julian Castro, um, one of whom was maybe going to be considered for beep, I don't know. Um, that was a joke. You can, you can <laughs> Um, so, you know, I just, uh, and they're twins, they're adorable, you can barely tell them apart. I'm just like, hey, Joaquin! Actually, somebody who I know from New York came up and started dropping the F-bomb right as I was saying hello to the both of them, and I was like, could you just, she was like, no, drop, I'm from New York, they gotta know how to do this. So right there in front of the secretary and the congressman, and I'm just like, hey, isn't it great to be a Latino in the year 2016 in the United States of America? Isn't it great? And they're kind of looking at me like, que le pasa Maria? What's going <laughs> Because, of course, I was being facetious. I mean, isn't it great that, that we are, like, the most attractive demographic group, right? We are so hot. It is, in fact, the year of the Latino, right? But it's a year when we get to be loved and despised at the same time. <laughs> it's true. We're loved and we're hated. So this week, down at Hispan Hispanic Her uh, Hysterical Hispanic Munch, I, I, I usually call it <laughs> Hispanic Heritage Month, but we're going to do Hysterical Hispanic Month. The, the question among powerful Latinos and Latinas, <laughs> the question was, okay, so no matter what happens after the election, how do we move forward when we know that about 30 to 40% of the United States of America has, let's just say, mixed feelings about us, Okay, the softening. How about if we just say they hate us? How do we move forward in a country when we know that? And when we, at, as Latinos, <clears throat> the centerpiece, the most visible centerpiece of the Trump campaign, and yet we're so invisible. I know you know this. Somebody uh, just said, oh, Maria, are they putting your name up to be one of the one of the deb debaters for the presidential debate, and it's like, yeah, the name is out there, but eso no va a pasar. And by the way, the backstory goes that, you know what, the people, the Electoral um, Debate Commission didn't even want to consider a Latino because they were kind of preemptively thinking if we put a Latino there, then Trump will say no, and we don't want to give him a reason to say no, so we're just not even going to put one. So it's like we are already experiencing the self-censorship ourselves. So for a, a, a while now, I've been kind of doing this kind of joke, you know, the U.S. Mambo that we live in, three steps forward, two steps back. Guys, you know this. It's three steps forward, 67 steps back. And it's very hard to dance a mambo like that. That was also a joke. <laughs> because the mambo looks like this. You know, you know that Sofia Vergara is the highest paid television actress in Hollywood right now, and you also know that Latina teenagers have the highest rate of attempted suicide in our country and have had for decades. You also know that Latinos are the, you know, 1.5 trillion and growing consumer market, specifically Latinas, and what we also know is that Latinos and Latinas 
are the fastest growing group of people behind all bars. Jail bars, prison bars, detention center bars. We also know that Latinos and Latinas are surpassing whites at the rate that they go f- straight from high school to college. And yet, in high schools, this week, last week, next week, high school students are building walls inside their schools or on the football fields as a joke. So that notion of being loved and hated at the same time, it is for reals. And yet, journalists like myself, and which is why I'm so thankful to the Ford Foundation and our other founder, funders, be, we are told, oh, well, you know, you're too close to that story. You're too, you, you can't be objective about it. It's too personal. And why do you get so emotional? What's the matter with you? And the parallel that I love to bring back is, you know, when journalists, when American journalists who were, who were um, inspired by our dear Frederick Douglass, when those black journalists were in the South covering lynchings, because that was news to be covered, and the white journalists were like, why are you covering those lynchings? It's not news. And they were told they had an agenda. And of course, we know that they were just telling us our history. So yeah, like you, I'm emotionally exhausted after this election. That's why I started meditating. After all of these years, this is the year that I started meditating. And thank God. Um, Because we do need to deepen our Latinx narratives. But do they want to listen? It's not necessarily pretty. We are angry. We're energized too. But we're also confused. How do you tell young Latinos to vote for a party that they say, but that's the party that basically supported the deportation of, you know, two million people? How do we do that? It's complicated. And at the same time, being seen as the other. And now, all of us have also had the possibility to witness how Latinos are internalizing this lack of narrative. Seriously? Two minutes? Damn. Okay, um, you know, taco trucks on every corner is something negative and my culture is going to come here to destroy you, internalizing the hate. And so, you know, what we do, how we at Latino USA and Futuro Media Group, how we tell these stories is from a place of deep authenticity, where like you, we are changing the narrative. So this week, today's Friday, right? So today's already dropped on Latino USA. We're doing our special on quinceañeras, which is, of course, a little controversial, but our headline is, is the quinceañera actually the best form of brown girl resistance in the United States of America, where you spend one whole day loving a brown girl and telling her she's worth it and she's beautiful and her dreams can come true. Is that a form of resistance? Assuming they don't spend all that money. One of our most listened to episodes, Blood on the Trail and the Untold Story of Latinos in the Southwest History, huge response because we were talking about Mexican lynchings that happened. And where is that in our histories? The Latinos, the hidden history of Latinos in rock and roll and in hip hop. These are the stories that we tell because we are trying to change the narrative. And it is that which motivates us every day. And yet in the changing of the narrative, the response. Because let us, you know this all, I am telling you exactly what you know. This is, and gracias Amalia for pointing out the struggle. Es una lucha. It is. How am I going to cut out like five pages? Okay. Um, my, 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 my message is that in the exhaustion of what we feel and in the internalization of these emotions, we cannot stop, right? We simply cannot stop. And as someone who, you know, like today, um, I wake up and I'm just, the first thing I hear on the radio is a a Wall Street banker saying that he's considering supporting Trump because he was very impressed by what he had to say at the economic forum that he was meeting. And my heart is like, like I don't even know this guy, he's on the radio and I'm hearing him and I'm like, does he not see us? Does he not? see what this means to us? Does he not understand what it means to us when you say that you will support someone like Donald Trump? 
And having said that, as a journalist, of course, I put Latino Donald Trump supporters on our air because they are also part and parcel of who we are. They are also part and parcel of our narr- narrative. And so the historic duty that we have, and we are so blessed truly to be here. Oyeme, what a day. What an amazing, amazing day. So many powerful people, minds, things that are happening. We are creating history. And I know that like me, you walk in the world every single day. Like, we are creating history. Oh, I'm going to get emotional. <clears throat> nope, I'm not going to do that. But it is emotional. Because if I don't have you, if I don't have you to wake up with every morning, to listen to the music that you've written, that you've created, to look at the artwork that, in this case, my husband, I'm so blessed to be married to an artist, that I can see and I can see the possibility. If you stop, what happens to us? You are our voice. You, the artists, who always follow your heart. And yeah, it's emotional, you guys. This is a time when our country could be amazing. Or don't ever let anyone tell you I'm leaving if something happens and that person is elected. No. (laughs) Guys, it is our duty. And so we double down. We double down. Because now, yeah, it's actually not for us, Susana, ¿verdad? Nosotros ya vamos para afuera. Es the next generation. It is them. I know it sucks to get old. But it, it, the good thing about it is that you can say whatever you want, even in front of the president of the Ford Foundation. I just can't believe I just... <laughs> that is the good thing. But make no mistake. Es una lucha. To take control of our narratives, to be the ones who decide, to be the ones who step up and say, I'm going to create something as terrifying as it was to create my own nonprofit. That is what we need to do to each other every single day. The second we don't believe in our voices, everybody loses in our country. And we have to tell our narrative. Porque somos complejos. Somos Latinos. We're complex. It's not easy. You know, everybody says, how do you do all that? And I'm like, well, I, I'm Mexican. I have 16 jobs. I never say no to work. You know, it's just, oh, they're all listed there. Well, there's a few missing. Uh, <laughs> I do it out of love. And I wasn't even born in this country. I became an American by choice. I'm an ABC. I do it out of love because I had to raise my hand and take that oath. I had to. I had to say, I will take arms, bear arms for this country. I had to raise my hand. And so my civic duty is my love of my journalism that I produce for you, but it's the love of the art that you produce that makes the rest of us able to survive. Muchas gracias. Thank you so much.